Welcome, my name is Nicole and this is a small introductory video on necessary condition analysis in international business. We will introduce the international business example that we will be using in this and further videos, the difference between necessity and sufficiency logic, the fundamental procedure through which necessary condition analysis identifies necessary conditions, and we will provide information on the data set used for our example. We demonstrate the basic idea of necessary condition analysis on an international business example. We analyze if characteristics in institutional environments present necessary conditions for foreign direct investments. As with most statistical procedures, necessary condition analysis starts with a theoretical idea on the relationship between constructs. Theory-wise, a location advantage is a necessary condition for multinational firms to opt for foreign direct investment. This is based on the OLI paradigm. O stands for ownership, L for location, and I for internalization. Examples of such location advantages can be taken from the rich literature on institutional environments and include a non-corrupt institutional environment, a low tax burden environment, an institutional environment with flexible labor regulation, a high political stability, and institutional environments which grant political rights to their citizens. Building on this, we may formulate, for instance, that there needs to be a minimum political stability for a country to attract FDI, or political stability is a necessary condition for foreign direct investment. You may have recognized the difference in formulating the hypothesis. And yes, the necessity logic is different. Authors using procedures such as regression analysis regularly interpret their findings using a sufficiency logic. Authors interpreting their findings using a sufficiency logic oftentimes use expressions such as a determinant is positively associated with or is related to an outcome. In our example, we could formulate political stability is positively associated with foreign direct investment. Along this logic, a single determinant, such as political stability, is sufficient but not necessary to increase an outcome. The absence of a single determinant, such as political stability, can be compensated by other determinants, for instance by a low tax burden, if you are considering a multiple regression model. The necessity logic is fundamentally different from this interpretation. It implies that a single determinant is necessary but not sufficient for the outcome. If the necessary cause is not in place, the outcome will not exist. Therewith, the necessary cause represents a constraint, a bottleneck or a critical factor that must be present to achieve an outcome. Considering our example, there would be no foreign direct investment into countries that are not politically stable if we would have identified political stability as a necessary condition. But how does necessary condition analysis actually identify a necessary condition? Necessary condition analysis refers to a ceiling line. The ceiling line separates the space without observations from the space with observations. Necessary conditions are then indicated through the empty space or ceiling zone. It basically determines the level of the condition that is necessary to reach a certain value of the outcome. In contrast to regression analysis, the ceiling line is not drawn through the middle of the data points, but on top of the data. There are two default techniques to draw ceiling lines. There is a CEFDH step function that is recommended for discrete data. And there is a CRFDH ceiling line, which is a trend line through the CEFDH line. And this one is recommended for continuous data. Let us try to understand this a little bit better looking at the graph on the slide. Assume that we are interested in achieving a certain outcome level, let's say 8. If we look at this outcome level, we can see here, as indicated through the empty space, that an outcome level of 8 is not achieved if we have a determinant value of 2 or 4, because there are no points indicating that there is a combination of these values. To achieve an outcome of 8, we at least need to have a value of the determinant 
that is around, yeah, let's say A2, if we look at the CRFDH ceiling line. That is, there is a certain minimum level of the determinant that is necessary to reach a certain level of the outcome. In the context of a publication project, we have compiled a data set that we would like to use for our practical example. This data set will be available on the official Necessary Condition Analysis website that is hosted by the team of Professor Jan Dohl and can be accessed by a research gate. Just visit my profile. The example data comprises one dependent variable, the foreign direct investment performance, and five independent variables, namely non-corruption, the tax burden of a country, labor regulation, political stability, and political rights. These have been compiled from different data providers, such as World Bank. The data comes in the form of eight-year averages. In the case that you have further questions, please just get in touch. You can either get in touch with myself, or you may want to contact Jan Dull, who is actually the founder of Necessary Condition Analysis. On this slide, you will find some interesting links, namely to my YouTube channel or to the NCA website, providing all kinds of resources around NCA.